Hey guys, in this video, we'll be looking at implicit differentiation. So, what's the deal with implicit differentiation? Why is it important? Why do we need it? How does it work? So, implicit differentiation is just a situation that you'll encounter where you'll have to find the derivative of this entire expression. So, my question to you guys is going to be, at first glance, how do you know that this is implicit differentiation? How do we know that's even the topic being covered? Because remember, on a test, or on an exam, they won't tell you this is implicit differentiation. You won't know that. They might just say differentiate. And it's up to you to figure that out. So, an easy little trick, you know that it's implicit differentiation based on the fact that you have X's and Y's. So, normally, you'll just have an X or just one variable. Most of the time, it's X. In this case, you'll see that you have two variables. As soon as you see a Y and an X, you'll know that you're doing implicit differentiation. That's all. So, you remember that trick again. So, how the heck do we solve this? The first thing we're going to do, step one, after you know that it's implicit differentiation, all you do is just simply differentiate each term, and you'll see what you get. This is the first step. So, differentiate each term. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, let's look at the first one, y squared. How do we differentiate y squared? Well, by a simple chain rule, right? Bring it down, subtract one. So you'll get two. Y, what? Squared? No, the squared becomes one, right? It's bring it down minus one. D multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Well, be careful here. When you're doing the derivative of a variable, what happens? Normally, when we derive x, we get one. However, in this question, our goal, you remember guys, your goal, is to get y prime equals whatever. You remember that. So you want y prime. So as a trick, wherever you're going to get a y, when you differentiate or find the derivative of y, you'll need to have y prime. So if I do a chain rule here, which is bring it down, subtract by 1, you get 2y, multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is y prime. Is that clear? I hope so. So we'll move on and you'll see it again. Subtracted by, okay, when you get to a term like this, x times y, you automatically know that this will be a product rule. Why? Because you have two terms being multiplied. So in my product rule, I will leave my coefficient as is on the outside and I'll just do a product rule with my x and y. So I'll derive the first, don't touch the second, plus, don't touch the first, derive the second. Right? So, now remember, is this correct? So, at first glance, I derive my x, I get 1. I did not touch my y, plus, then, I don't touch my x, but in deriving my y, do I get a y, or do I get y prime? Well, what did I say before? When you derive y, you get y prime. So this is, in fact, a y prime. Okay? So keep that in mind. Close your bracket. And what's this equal what's gonna this equal to? So let's erase this here. Alright. So when you derive this, it will be a simple chain rule. Right? And since there's no y's, it just you leave it as is. Now remember the goal that I wrote for you guys. The goal is to get y prime. So Every term that has a y prime in it, you keep to one side, and everything else you'll bring to the other side. But let me just multiply this out to get it nice and neat. So I have 2y, y prime, minus 2y, minus 2x, y prime, equals 3x squared. Okay? So what am I going to do here? Remember I said I want my y primes on one side and everything else on the other side. Well, what's the only term that does not have a y prime? Here. So I'm going to bring my negative 2y over. So again, it's a little tedious, but just make sure you recopy what you need. 2x, y prime. And guys, please, when you're doing a question like this, take your time. Because there's so many times that I've seen students forget to put a y prime. So try to avoid making silly mistakes here. It's very easy to fall into that trap. Okay? Remember, I want you guys to do well, and I'll always tell you guys where the traps are to, uh, to avoid. All right. 
So at this point, I've isolated my y primes and I've brought whatever is left to the other side. Now here, what you'll have to do, this will always be the case all the time, guys. You will have to factor out a y prime. Always, always, always. If you didn't do this step, you know you did something wrong, go back and redo it. So when you factor out a y prime, you'll be left with whatever is left. 2y minus 2x. Is that okay? And the right side, we don't touch. Okay? One more step. The only last step is to, remember, you want y prime alone. So you see how this question, in knowing the goal of this question, how much easier it got. We wanted y prime alone. So we've done everything to isolate y prime. All we have to do now is divide by what's in front or I guess in this case after it, but it's a product. So to get rid of a product, you just divide by that term. And if I did it to this side, I got to do it to the other side. Okay. I remember here it'll cancel out and you get your y prime from the beginning. 2y divided by 2y minus 2x. And once again, as I often do, you are done. All right, guys, so implicit differentiation is nothing more than this. You will get some type of question that has an x and a y involved in it. At that point, you know right away, okay, good, I got to do implicit differentiation. How do I do that? You want to, wherever you see a y, you do the derivative and make sure to have your y prime as well. When you see two different variables being multiplied, remember that it will be a product rule. And don't forget to also derive the right side of the equation. After that, what you, what you will then do is you will combine your like terms or multiply out. You will then remember to put your y primes on one side and everything else on the other side. Then you will factor out a y prime, which is a key step here. Remember that this is a key step. When you factor out your y prime, you'll be left with whatever is inside. Make sure to then divide by whatever is in front of it or being multiplied by it. Make sure to do that to the other side. And you're left with your y prime equation. And essentially, guys, to tie it all together, this is nothing more than a derivative of the original equation. So what is this really? This is the slope. So in a question, if they would ask you to find the, um, for example, the equation of the tangent line, this would be your m. So remember that. This would be your m. If they would tell you, find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1, well, you can plug in x equals 1 here and y whatever if they give you that. Just as a little side note. All right, guys. So I hope I helped. And make sure to look out for other videos for uh, other topics coming up.